Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. Welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about, or I'm going to give you my thoughts on the question of, should you be discounting your services? Now, I'm sure that you've seen those Facebook ads offering the $27 initial consultations, x-rays, first adjustments. Now, this whole concept is one of those areas that tends to really get many practitioners quite fired up. We have very two very distinct kind of thought process on it. Those that are really for it and those that think it's the worst, most demeaning thing that we could possibly do as health practitioners. Anyway, so in today's episode, I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. Now, here's what got me started on this. On the weekend, um, I was at a friend's birthday party. And as I'm sure you do too, invariably, we got talking about chiropractic. The really lovely woman I was chatting to mentioned that there was a new chiropractor in her town that was all over social media. Now, this really piqued my interest because I'm interested in that kind of stuff. And then she went on to say that what they were doing is constantly offering their discounted services. Now, she said it in a way that really fascinated me because it was clear that she was not impressed with what they were doing. In fact, the way that she spoke about it uh, was really in quite a demeaning way. It was clear to me that she thought that this is something that just wasn't a cool thing to be doing. Now, here's the challenge with discounting your services. Now, I've done it lots and lots of times in the past. I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about when I think you should be doing it. We'll talk about the benefits of discounting your service, and we'll talk about the costs that come along at discounting your services as well. So we'll go through all of that today, and then I'll give you, if you're going to head down that path, I'll talk to you about the best way to do it as, as well. But let, let's dive our way kind of into it as well. So here's the challenge when it comes to discounting your services. The biggest challenge is this, is that it really, really works. If you put one of those $27 ads out there, then you're going to find most likely, if you do it right, um, and your ad copies right, and you know it goes right through the right kind of landing page, and the whole thing is set up, is a whole bunch of people will come into your practice um, it will give you a flood of new patients into your practice. Now, it works because whenever we lower the price, and I'm sure, you know, I'm not telling you anything new here. When we lower the price, we lower the barrier of entry into our practice. In fact, lowering the price is a level of risk reversal. One of the things as human beings that we're constantly wanting to do is to minimize the chance of us looking stupid. Now, nobody likes it when they spend a whole bunch of money on something and it turned out to be a fraud, a waste of their time, effort, and energy. So when we lower the price there, part of what's going on inside our primal brains there is a level of risk reversal. In fact, what researchers have shown, and this came out of Stanford, I'm gonna talk about a couple of interesting reasons. So much of this cool stuff tends to come out of Stanford for some reason there too, is that when we're buying something, it actually activates the pain centers in our brain. So the same pain center that might happen if you break your leg, if you've got a headache, this is what happens when we buy something. And so we want to really minimize the amount of that pain center that's actually stimulated in somebody's brain. And one of the ways to do that is to lower the barrier of entry, to actually decrease the price that you have. Now, the challenge, because it works, we're tempted to do it again and again and again and again. Now, the more that we do this, the end cost of this is that it starts to decrease the scarcity of our offer. So think about it. Why would you come and buy for me, buy from me at my 50% sale if you knew that I was going to do the same thing next week and probably the week after and probably the week after that? So this is what happens. And I talk to practitioners, man, at least once a month, I'm chatting with somebody who said, look, I used to run these Facebook ads in the early days. They worked amazingly for me and they just stopped working. Facebook ads don't work anymore. Well, first of all, that's not true at all. I have a way that I teach Facebook ads. I'll go into some detail about that in a moment. And they get fantastic results for my clients when I run them for myself. As a general rule for every dollar that I invest in, I at least get three back. That's the worst I do. And often my goal is to get somewhere between five and seven back as well. So if you're doing the Facebook ads right, they work. Now, the reason they stop working for these practitioners and this is, is you, is that really what's happened is that your community has got a level of blindness to your offer. Now, the other concern that comes along with decreasing and discounting your price is the kind of person that it tends to attract into your practice. We often refer to tire kickers. Now, because as health practitioners, often what we're asking for our patients is a significant commitment of time 
and money, we need to be careful with how much we lower that barrier of entry. So if we lower the barrier of entry, it means more people are going to raise their hand and come and see us. But maybe they're just kind of coming in to see us for shits and giggles. You know, they're not really all that interested in solving their problem. And if you then lay out a recommendation that might be six weeks, six months, 12 weeks, 12 months, that's, you know, thousands of dollars and lots of effort, then that person, really, they haven't qualified themselves as somebody that's really interested in solving their problem. So that's the other challenge that tends to come along with it. The other thing that you want to think about, and I kind of touched on this beforehand, is do you want to be known as the discount chiropractor, the discount naturopath? Is that the way that you want to position yourself? Now, if you do, that's totally okay. I mean, this is what's working for Amazon. You know, Amazon completes... Uh, competes on price alone. Now, when we want to compete on price alone, we do become vulnerable. We become vulnerable in this process that's often referred to as a race to the bottom because some other chiropractor, naturopath, health practitioner might come into town and instead of offering a $27 initial consultation, they're going to offer a $17 one. And then you're going to go down to a $15 one and then they'll offer a $7 initial consultation. And then eventually you're offering a zero. I'm going to do it free. Your first visit is absolutely free. And it gets to the stage where ultimately your price gets so low that your practice is no longer profitable anymore. So that's the risk in that situation. Now, this works for big companies like Amazon because they just have such massive buying value uh, power, so to speak, is that anybody else that tries to compete against them, Amazon systems are so great that it's, you know, they're going to knock most people off. But this is not the case for most of us as small brick and mortar businesses. We're very vulnerable to price. And as we continue to cut our prices down. Now, the other thing to think about, too, is that price really impacts experience. There's some really, again, more Stanford research here. They did some interesting research on people with drinking wine, where they told people they were drinking a $5 bottle of wine, and then people were drinking a $100 bottle of wine. Now, the thing was, they were all drinking the same wine. They then did functional MRIs on the people's brains and they had them fill out questionnaires afterwards. Now, not surprisingly, um, people said they enjoyed the $100 bottle of wine a lot more. But what was wild is literally their brains were different. Their brains was lighting up a lot more of the pleasure centers when they were you know, drinking the $100 bottle of wine versus the $5 bottle of wine. Now, this doesn't just work for bottles of wine. It also works for pain relief medication. It's been shown to work for energy drinks and in many other areas as well. So if we're charging discount prices, you're also impacting the kind of experience that people have in your practice. Are you wanting to have a prestige experience or are you wanting to have a discount experience? Now, again, there's nothing wrong with having a discount experience, but there are some vulnerabilities that go along with it. Now, when you think about premium brands, if I think about Porsche or Rolex, um, Apple, you know, Lululemon, you don't see these brands offering discounts very often, if at all. In fact, I've never seen Rolex. I've never seen advertisements for Rolex saying they've got a 20% sale, buy one, get one free. I've never seen that with Porsche. I think Lululemon might offer a discount maybe once a year, not very often. Now, because they only offer it once a year, in many cases, what happens is that people just flood there. So when there is a sense of realness to the discount, and it doesn't happen very often, then in many cases, the results of it can be much more effective. So this is part of what I recommend to my coaching clients. By all means, offer these reduced rates. But at the very most, the very most you should be doing it four times a year. And really what you are doing in between uh, these discounts is really what uh, makes them work the most. So in between, if for instance, you said, look, you know, four times a year, I'm going to do an offer for a couple of weeks where I'm going to half my initial consultation uh, rate. In between that, what you should be doing is reaching, uh, reaching, what you should be doing is sharing content each and every week, valuable content that positions you as the authority, as the expert, as the go-to person in your town. So for 48 weeks of the year, what you're doing is you're positioning yourself as the Apple of chiropractic, the Porsche, the Rolex of chiropractic, or the Lululemon of uh, you know naturopathy or Chinese medicine. So you're really positioning yourself as a premium brand. And then when you offer those discounts, they're really not going to go about uh, removing the brand value, so to speak. Now, for some of you, you might be saying right now, Angus, I'm new in practice. I need new patients right now. I know these work. I'm going to do it. I, I really, what, what am I meant to do? And if you're feeling this way, then first of all, I've been there, okay? I, you know, I've opened multiple practices. 
I might only have one practice now because I just sold one of them, but that's a story for a, a, another time or two. So I know what it's like to be in this situation. And if you're feeling this way, then I want to ask you a question. I want you to imagine that you're sitting knee to knee with a patient right now. And let's just say that the guy that's sitting in front of you has had migraine headaches over the last decade. He gets them on average twice a month, but the uh, intensity and frequency of them has gone up recently. And he's sitting here with you and he's saying, listen, or in my case, Angus, I need to get rid of these headaches ASAP. They're impacting every area of my life. I'm not able to keep up at work. I'm really suffering at home with my wife and the kids there. I haven't been getting to the gym over the recent three, four months because the headaches are just ruining me. I need to get these sorted tomorrow or at the very least this next week or maybe this next month or two. Now, I hope if you were sitting down with a patient like this, then you would do what I would do is you would tell them, look, I'm going to do my very, very best to help you out with these migraines, these headaches as quickly as possible. But what I need to tell you is that these headaches, these migraines have come over time. You know, it's the last decade of your life that has built up to you having these migraines and have built up to you having the health the way that things are at the moment. And as much as I'd like to tell you that they're going to go next week, it's probably going to be the next three, four, maybe five months of us working together to get this problem solved. Now that response that we have to give our patients with love and compassion. Now, sure, sometimes they go even faster than that too. But building health is much the same as building a healthy practice. It takes time. There are absolutely no shortcuts. And while you might be listening to this right now, wanting results tomorrow, when you try and shortcut your way through to the results, when you set yourself up as the discount chiropractor, the discount naturopath in your town, it's really hard to change those perceptions. You know, you'll be known as that kind of person for the rest of your career. You know, I've had friends of mine that, you know, through different things that they've done in practices have developed really shitty reputations. And it's taken a long time to unwind that. So I want you to be patient. Now, this means that for many of us, uh, you know, we need to cut our budgets back. We need to be really careful about our overheads. We need to be really careful about when should we have gone into practice. So in essence, should you be discounting your practices, uh, discounting your, your, um, your, uh, your fees there too? Then sometimes I think it's okay that, you know, if it's, you know, two, three, maybe four times a year uh, that you do it for a very minimal point of time. And in between doing that, that you're constantly adding value to your community. So you're not always showing up as the discount uh, chiropractor or naturopath. Then I think it's something that's totally okay to do. The other circumstance where I have consistently discounted uh, my fees is when I'm doing an external talk. So I've done lots of uh, uh, community and corporate talks over the years. And if I can get in front of a group of people for 30 to 45 minutes and I can solve some problems for them, I can add some value, and then I can talk about the work that we do where I can really add value about that and I can differentiate our chiropractic practice from the other chiropractic practices in town. Now, one of the things I want to do in part of that is my differentiation is I want to let people know we're not the quick fix chiropractors. You know, you're not going to just come into me. I'm not going to just put you on the table and crack your back and send you on the way. We're going to do a thorough history and examination. We're going to run some tests to find out exactly what's going on. And we're going to work with you in the coming months to show you exactly how you can get way well and stay well. To some extent, when I communicate that about my practice, what I'm actually doing is I'm pushing away some of those tire kickers. So in those circumstances, when I can communicate with people beforehand, I always at the end of the talks offer a discounted initial consultation. So sometimes I'll half it, sometimes I'll add 30% off it, but I do want to give a little bit of encouragement for people to, to take the next steps. So if you're finding that you're, if, so first of all, if you're running these type of discounted offers all the time and they're not working for you any longer, then stop them right now, please, and start reaching back out into your community and adding value to them, okay? Start to position your practice as valuable, as authorities, as experts. And it may well be for this next 12 months that you don't show up like that at all. But if you've never run these ads before, and you're scared of running them, then let me take the fear away. They can be fantastic. You can you know, spend three or 400 bucks and then very quickly end up with eight, 10, sometimes 20 new patients. The enthusiasm and the excitement that comes from that. And remember, we're gonna find more people and help them, okay? So in essence, that's really my take on uh, initial consultations at reduced prices. There is some real value at them, but we don't wanna be doing them all the time. Now, if you're wanting to, again, a side note, I should have mentioned this beforehand. 
with regards to, you know, what do I do then? Like if I'm stuck in this situation and I'm not going to be running discounted ads and I want to really build some value in my community, go back to, I think it's probably going to be the episode before this, episode 195, where I talk through the six practice multipliers. Inside of that, I will go through step by step through the strategies and some of the tactics that you should be using to help to position your practice as the go-to place for you to build more authority, trust and expertise in your community. That's the actual blueprint for how you go about doing it. All right, team, that's enough for me today. Until next time, thanks for all that you do. Keep saving lives. I look forward to seeing you back here real soon. Bye. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out the Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work one-on-one with you to apply, implement, systematize, and help guide you and your practice to the next level. Now you can join me on over at adiomedia.com forward slash join. That's adiomedia.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you in there.